Welcome to Kickstarter Radio. I'm your host, Lipstick Paddy, and today we are looking at the Valley of the Dead King. This is a class guide or a role guide <clears throat> so that if you're having a game of uh, Explore It um, and you've got anyone coming around to play, you can send them a video to explain all of the classes in each of the sec sections, whether it is Striker, Healer, Assist, Sapper, Utility, or even a dual class if you want to make the game a little bit easier. And in the description of this video will be the links to get all of the sections um, for easy, for you to find them very easy. And if you like the video content, please give it a thumbs up. And if you see any errors in today's video, please put them in the comments below and I'll make sure it gets pinned at the top. So you can check the comments for the pins if there's any errata to anything said in this video. So today we're looking at the striker roles. What are strikers? The strikers focus on dealing health damage to your opponents and they are generally the biggest heavy hitters in the game. There is the Brutes, Berserkers, Necromancers, Rabble Rouser and Summoner. These are really interesting and you're definitely going to have a striker in your group without question to really bring that damage explosion coming. So let's crack on with the first in the list. The Brute can deal massive amounts of damage multiple times in one combat round. That's right. The Brute, though, he has Navigation 1, Exploration 1, Survivability 1. So don't Good luck trying to get... You basically get lost with this guy. You're going to need someone in your group that's going to be good at navigate. He's not going to find any gold. Is at 1. And his survivability is 1. So this guy is going to be needing to feed this guy. Definitely. He's got a massive 8 hit points. <laughs> which is the same as the Berserker. It's the most in the game. Barring the uh, dual classes. His energy is 4. His attack, base attack is 3 and his defense is uh, 2. His call sign is defend this. He has an aggress aggressive stance which only costs 1. He starts at rank 1. This mastery deals health damage equal to the aggressive stance plus your attack ability which is called brutal assault. This damage is difficult to defend against. If, you de if your opponent defends, roll a 10-sided die. If the result is less than or equal to your aggressive stance, which is this special ability, you're going to pierce the damage, which means they can't defend against it. So that's really good. Now, at rank 7, the aggressive stance will upgrade and it will always pierce. So you're not going to be worried about defending because it's going to push through every defense and additionally you treat each opponent as a favored opponent when using this skill so what does that mean at rank seven you'll do health damage equal to the aggressive rank of the ability plus your basic attack plus another die and if you have if you're attacking an enemy of your favorite opponent and you get this rank i believe you get two dice when you're facing them so it's like a massive um, boost to damage with the aggressive stance anyway the other ability you have is relentless strike comes in at rank one costs one to use this mastery lets you use your attacking ability brutal assault a number of times this is your basic attack <clears throat> it will attack it goes on around one third of relentless strike so if you get relentless strike up to one sorry up to three you'll get two basic attacks you get it up to six you'll get three basic attacks no you get it up to three to get one bonus yeah that's how it works here however any extra attacks you do costs energy so you do need to factor in energy um, to this character role now these strikes are counted as separate attacks for the purpose of defending against them 
These attacks do gain the piercing quality to half your guard rank and uh... so yeah so there is a little bit of potential super damage that can come off these also that's your defensive rank now the berserker can sacrifice its health to increase damage to an opponent and basically can endure damage that's going to kill them so basically when they get to zero hp they won't die so let's learn a little bit about them. Now, the basic things, they've got a navigation of one, explore two, survival one, so not too bad. They've got a massive HP of eight, so their health is the biggest class out of the normal rolls. The energy is a three, and they have a great basic attack of three, which is a high amount, and a low defense of one. They like to go, Arr! yes. Now they start off with a rank 2 uh, ability called Rage. It's very low cost of 1 energy. You may sacrifice health by up to twice of this rank when using this power. So you start at rank 2. If you sacrifice, that means you can sacrifice um, health up to twice. So you can sacrifice 4 health. What's that health going to do? Basically, that will add to the damage, basically. So Rage deals health damage to opponent equal, and also with your attack ability, of what is called Bash, plus the Rage rank, plus damage per point sacrificed. <laughs> so what does that mean? Your Rage rank, the health you've, that you're, you're sacrificing, plus your attack ability, which is for the Berserker, starts at three so really really good good damage on this at rank five that ability will basically you could you can choose a target um of an individual and uh, so you basically you can soak up damage from another one in the party and um, you become furious if you get attacked then and your next attack cannot be softened or negated and it will deal additional damage um equal to your bash rank which is your attack ability which starts at three so um basically when you get angry you're gonna have a, a your bash attack it gives you an extra damage so that rage is really really good now the second ability you have is rank two it starts at endure has no cost will automatically activate when you die you'll have one energy um remaining now once active you gain a pool of temporary health equal to your defense ability which starts at one so if you're going to be using rage and use your health you're going to have to get your energy up um to basically make sure endure is uh can be going good you know so anyway so your temporary health Temporary health comes off your defense. You're going to get that defense up for this. And it's plus twice your endure ranks. So basically this attack, this special attack endure. Now, while it, while you're in the temporary health, which is endure, when it's in effect, you can only perform basic attacks or defense. So you do a giant attack. You've got no health left. You're in this endure state. You need a healer to reset you basically any healing received when you're in this form will bring you back to one health and it will end the endure now it says if combat ends and you're still below zero um, you're gonna die and each time endure is activated rage is strengthened by four this, this bonus damage will grow throughout the battle. So if you've got a healer, that bet you do rage, you go into endure. Healer brings you back, puts you back up to full health. Rage again, go back into endure. Every time you do that rotation, you're going to get stronger, 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 stronger. It is a really interesting one, but you do need a really strong healer who's got a good pool of energy that can keep you on your feet. But it is a really fun class. That is the Berserker. 
Right, the Necromancer can turn defeated enemies into the Undead Legion, which can be summoned in combat, as well as draw health from allies to damage an opponent. That's not very nice, is it? Anyway, it starts off with Nav 2, Experience... Exploration, sorry, 2, Survivability 1. That 1 survivability means they're going to need to be fed. HP 4, mega low HP on the uh, Necromancer, dear me. Um, that needs to be buffed big time. Or have someone in the party that can shield the Necromancer if you have them. Energy is 6, which is high. And the basic attack and defense is 1, the lowest you can have. One of the lowest characters to start off with base attack and defense. Like I said, they need a kind of a defensive tank to keep them. And a, and a healer. And they need to buff their HP, big time. Now, they can target health or energy um, with their basic attack, though. So that's something that they have. Now... The first ability, rank two, it starts off called health tap, costs one. You siphon health from your you siphon health from your allies and use it to attack your opponents. Each ally is going to suffer one health when you do this, and you may siphon more from an ally up to twice your health tap rank. Well, it already starts at two, so potentially you could draw four health from your enemy. Sorry, from your ally. Ouch. This attack deals health. Uh, sorry, it deals the health tap rank plus your base attack ability, which is called Shadow Assault, plus the total amount of health siphoned. So let's say your health tap is rank two you siphon four health that's four plus two that's six and your base attack at the beginning is one so you've got a seven attack that's really strong at rank five you may also siphon health from your dark legion what the hell is your dark legion your dark legion is enemies that you've uh, defeated and put them into your undead legion so it's collected enemies you can you can siphon health from them so basically rank five you can stop drawing health from your enemy from your team and pull it from your legion right so what's legion now at rank three it begins at rank three which is very strong the dial legion it costs two energy to, to to do though you can summon each dead enemy encounter in the Dark Legion for the duration of this round. Now, this is fantastic because you could potentially be summoning a dragon here. This is fantastic. Now, they use each of their attack and gain a damage boost equal to the number of encounters in the Dark Legion. So the bigger the army, the bigger the damage boost. Now, healing received by members of the Dark Legion is negated, so you, you can't heal them. So you're basically burning them down to the ground to do damage. <laughs> now, at rank 6, the Dark Legion will defend equal to half of your defense ability, Deathly Aura rank. So um, when you use them in combat, they do get a little bit of defense, which is not too shabby. So they're not going to be too squishy. Potentially squizzy, squishy, but it's basically you defeat encounters, you grab them in your army, and it's like an ammo. You're going to run out of them. You're going to have to start. You know, I don't think you'll probably run out of them because you're going to get encounters through the game all the time. But um, yeah, you'll be you'll think about using them against strong enemies like bosses and stuff because you're just going to bring out this massive army against a boss, and it's just going to be awesome. So, yeah, that's why the Necromancer is going to be strong. Remember, they're super low HP, but massive amount of gameplay that needs good support. Hmm, <laughs> but a really interesting one. The Rabble Rouser. What a curious role this is. Now, Nav 1, Explore 1, Survivability 2. Not too bad, looking for food. HP 6, pretty good. Energy 5, pretty good. Starts off with an attack. Base attack of 3, pretty good. That's high. Defense 1, that's low. Someone get me a drink, they say. Now, they have a passive. 
they can carry an additional five units of food. Ooh. Now, additionally, before each combat begins, you can choose an ally to watch over until the end of combat. Mm. Anytime your watched over ally is targeted by your opponent, your rowdy uppercut is strengthened by one. That is your second ability. So if, if, you, if you're in a long battle and you keep getting attacked, this uppercut is going to keep getting stronger. Like, it will, it will kind of build up, build up and build up really, really good. And, um, yeah, so two abilities, of course. Rank 2 begins with Impressive Belch, um, low cost of 1 energy. You consume your favourite drink to give you an advantage. Choose up to the half of your Impressive Belch rank food and discard it. What is that? Well, your impressive belch rank is starts off at two, so that'll be one. So you can you can basically have some food. You're going to drink one bottle. As your impressive belch goes up, though, you'll be able to consume more drinks. Now you belch after drinking it, and are so emboldened by the sound of the burp that your next attack ability, which is called Teetering Haymaker, gains a damage boost equal to the impressive belch plus three times the number of food you eat. So you've got a combo impressive belch with your base attack ability and the more drinks you can swig down, it adds a multiplier to your attack which is delicious, it really is. At rank 6 though, this is great. You can ignore your base attack and use your... Rowdy. Sorry, you can use the base attack as a, <laughs> as a bonus to the belch, actually. Sorry, yeah, sorry. I'm getting next confused. At rank 6, you can use the Teetering Hate Maker, which is your base attack whilst also belching so um so yeah you're gonna get more damage all right next ability starts off at rank one rowdy uppercut costs one this mastery deals health damage equal to the uppercut plus your attack ability that's it uh, remember though with your passive anytime an ally that you're watching over gets hit your rowdy uppercut will get upgraded and will become stronger um, but your main rotation is belch, base attack, belch, base attack, belch, uppercut if it becomes strong. But of course your impressive belch is using up food, isn't it? So you might want to combo up with a character that can make food. And there is one out there that we'll find out in here. It's the apothecary can make food drinks basically so if you if you've got a rabble rouser and apothecary they team up really well that's one of the healing um classes anyway the summoner can summon any open encounter to fight in combat and improve that encounter's ability to fight all right summoner um navigation one so not very good at look, finding the way Exploration 2, not bad, might find some money. Survivability 2, that's good for food. HP 5, a little low. Energy 6, high. Base attack 1, defense 2. Fear my power. Hmm. Right, so what does the, uh, what's going on here? Now you have an ability rank 2, summoning circle. Very cheap, 1 energy to cost. You summon an open encounter card. These are encounter cards that are going to be on the uh, revealed on the map. You can basically pull any of them and uh, keep using them for a number of rounds equal to half your summoning circle. So as you begin the game, you can only use one of those encounters for one round. It says, roll the action dice to determine its action. This is the AI off the card. Now, you, might, you may use this mastery when you have a summon in play. And um, 
it automatically becomes an individual target for the round. So you've, you've got an encounter in front of you. You're going to pull another set summoning circle. Another encounter is going to come on. But that encounter, the second one, is actually going to become a target and uh, will draw the line of fire. Um, and you may also use then your attack ability, which is Phantom Strike, um, with the summon. So basically your summons get a bit stronger when you've got a second one out, um, which is nice. Now it says you may only have one encounter summoned at a time. Huh? So if that, what's going on here then? So you've, you've got one out, an encounter, and you summon another one, which is going to replace it, but it gets targeted. Hmm. All right. Now at rank six, your summon rolls a six-sided die as extra damage, and it can explode. So if you get the hex symbol, which is a six in combat, you can keep rolling it and get more damage with the summon. Right. Now the second ability is comes as rank one basic invocation. One energy to use. Invocation may only be used when you have an active ongoing summon. So you need your summoning circle, then you go invocation. What does it do? Invocation deals health damage to an opponent equal to your attack ability, base attack called Phantom Strike plus the invocation rank. So it's base attack plus the rank of this ability plus twice the level of your current summon. So you've got a level 10 ability that's going to add 20 to your base attack and the invocation cost. So that's really strong. At rank 5, you may choose which action your summoner makes this round. So when Invocation gets rank 5, you suddenly become stronger with the summons and you don't have to roll dice. You can basically choose the strong attack every time. So the summoner is a really interesting class, pulling encounters from the open encounters and um, using them as a pet almost. Eventually getting ability rank 5 of Invocation where you can choose their attack. And, um, and yeah. That's what it's all about. And you can get really strong encounters and uh, and use them, but you can't keep them, can you? You summon them in and then they, at the end of the round, they're gone. So yeah, it dies at the end of combat or its duration, because like again, your summoning circle determines how long it is in battle. So yeah, that is the summoner. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please let me know in the comments down below what your favorite role is from this list. And let me know if you've got any tips for playing that role, or even if I've got any mistakes, let me know in the comments and I'll make sure the errata gets pinned to the top of the comments. So thank you so much for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up, think about subscribing, and check the notes down below if you want links to other role guides that I do on the channel. So this is Kickstarter Radio. I'm your host, Lipstick Paddy. You take care, stay safe, Bye-bye for now, and have some amazing adventures in the Explorate system. Awesome source.